I'll talk a little bit about defending against them later. It was so difficult to defend against that overload they created um, and such a team cohesion uh, that we actually had to adapt, which was a little bit contentious within our football club to try and win that game. This is now talking a little bit more about uh, upgrading of crosses. I spoke to my analysts, um, some top analysts out at Bristol City, and this is just a little bit of a case study, really. And I think is the best way to actually, if you're in a staff, to talk about data. You know, can you use the data to find something that the coaches can work on, can improve, can highlight to the players, and offer that evidence-based learnings, really, and potentially theme the week? And I asked my analysts, headed up by... Uh, a top guy called Sean Gillespie, uh, alongside Sam Stanton, who was my um, first team analyst at the time, to find one theme that we could work on and improve. Uh, and then obviously bring this evidence-based approach to the players, get the buy-in, and then try and implement that within our first team uh, game model. And you can see here that uh, the one theme with the promoted teams, that they had an extremely high concentration of crosses versus the lead average uh, in these sort of deep areas of the pitch, deep areas of the final third. You can see they all did it in different ways. Norwich uh, particularly uh, attacked down the left and got into that cutback zone extremely well. Sheffield United under Wilder and were fantastic in their 3-5-2 with overlapping centre halves. And I'll talk a little bit about defending against them later. It was so difficult to defend against that overload they created um, and such a team cohesion. Uh, that we actually had to adapt, which was a little bit contentious within our football club to try and win that game. Leeds United under Bielsa, uh, built on pressure, built on disruption, and obviously quality and penetration. And Aston Villa, that arguably probably had the most talent um, in the division, ended up going up through the playoffs. So we looked at this, we looked at our own heat map and realised that something needed to change and we needed to adapt and implement something. So you can see in this first block uh, crossing concentration that we attacked uh, heavily down the right. Um, I think sometimes that's a byproduct of having two right footed centre midfielders as well. Uh, very good players in our midfield, but both right footed and naturally played out to the right. Um, but also uh, expectation pressure from the crowd to deliver balls into the box, not necessarily conducive um, to, to scoring as many goals as you need to to get promoted out of the division. So you can see in this first block, 13.4% uh, of our crosses we delivered from that deep area, which we know is effectively a one in 90 chance of scoring. Now, if you've got Quinn and Phillips, where you want to deliver from there, upgrade the assist via a knockdown in these type areas, that would obviously become part of the expected goals chain and not necessarily the direct assist. So we worked out and we understood that we needed to articulate to the boys that we need to be a little bit more patient. We need more runs of attacks. We need more partial success. We need to upgrade these crosses. So we set about working on this within the players. So the first 11 games, you can see that heat map. And then the five games based on game 12 to game 16, after we'd worked on it, you can see a pattern emerging. More consistency, so both sides offering uh, quality above the league average, and in particular, uh, this type zone here uh, that we was penetrating much better than we were before. We was then able to obviously uh, present this back to the players, you know, look, well done, all your hard work. We've won games in that spell. We'd scored goals in that spell. We'd also had a lot more runs of attack. So it was important to present to the boys, again, that evidence-based approach to basically reaffirm and thank them um, for their concentration and their implementation. And I think that seeing this visually, young players understand statistics now, they understand data, and they understand that we was working towards a particular goal. And I think that they enjoyed um, pretty much uh, how, how we worked. So here is that 2018-19 championship assists again. So you can see over all the goals scored in around that final third. If you look at it again, a slight, um, what would I say, bias towards the right side, 
could be because of the centre midfielders uh, dominate down that side. Another interesting point that maybe we should think about is on the flip side of defending this, would you recruit the, the highest paid player or the highest played defender as the best decision maker as your left side centre half or even left back? Because if the data is telling you that more assists come from the right side, so 265 from the right, if we exclude zone two, and 237 from the left, it might be worth paying a little bit more money uh, to get a better player, better decision maker at left side centre half. And actually, sometimes we think of balance as well. Actually, it's irrelevant um, in this sense. So if you can make your best defender the left side centre half, you've got more chance of keeping more clean sheets. But again, you can see uh, that only 21 out of all those assists have come from in these deep areas of the pitch and certainly less on the left side compared to the right. But again, it's just a visual and important to understand that no matter what league, no matter what style, whether it's the World Cup or, or non-league, uh, this is genuinely pretty, pretty consistent across the board and therefore you can implement that data within your coaching methodology. Bit busy this slide, so bear with me. Um, but again, I'm just trying to reinforce the fact that this upgrading of the shot quality becomes really important. If you can psychologically bed this into the player's mindset, you're gonna get more runs of attacks, you're gonna get more shots, you're gonna get more corners, more throw-ins in the final third, and everything can build on the back of it. And effectively, uh, you can see from this, 3,527 attempts, which is this one, this one. Uh, there's only been 42 assists, which is effectively, I think, about one in 90, maybe that sort of level. Um, if we can upgrade the cross in from zone six into zone one, you're talking around uh, one in five. So it's a plus 48 set of assists. If you can get in there, and cut back, get in there five times a game, chances are you're going to score one. And this is a big increase in obviously three times plus this shot quality and this increase. I think that's statistically, again, quite interesting. Um, you can just see the various areas of upgrade. Um, I think also if the players understand that, the forwards can time their movement off it um, and you can disrupt back line. Thank you.